Rock Band, everybody. There you go. My goodness. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. What a great way to start the work day. <laughs> uh, Lewis, tonight, we got a couple of lovely uh, fellas out here. Uh, ABC News Chief Washington Correspondent yeah. Jonathan Carl is going to be out here in just a little while. He's got his book, Betrayal, which is about January 6th, yeah. all events leading up to that. Broke some news just the last few days over there. And, of course, uh, everybody loves uh, The Office. B.J. Novak is going to be out here in just a little while. He's got a new film called Vengeance coming out here. St. Vincent, I just got to say to you real quick, thank you so much for being here this week. It has been such a joy for us to have Woo! you over there. Truly. Truly, truly, truly. Truly, for real, for real. I hope, you, I hope you've had fun. Oh, I've had the time of my life. Oh, I'm so glad. Isn't this an amazing... Aren't these amazing oh. people to play for in a beautiful space right here? All right, I don't want to freak you out, but I want to show you a photo I, I keep in my office. No. <laughs> I keep that photo in my office. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and it's, you know, because these days can be kind of hard doing the show. It's a bit of a grind here, as yeah. anybody would tell you. It's a yeah. great job, and I'm, yeah. I'm privileged to have it, but... I, every so often, I look at this and go, like, look at who I get to meet. Look at the kind of artists I get to have on the show. And you're an exemplar of that for me. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Folks, I spend most of my time right over there carefully selecting the finest and healthiest news, crossbreeding it with setups descended from the most topical storylines, then hand-raising them to produce for you the American Kennel Club Best in Show winning prize Tibetan Mastiff that is my monologue. But sometimes, just sometimes, folks, I huff uh, from a sink sack full of uncapped felt tip markers, break into a roadside petting zoo, spray the place down with black market pheromones, then unlock all the cages and unleash a week-long interspecies orgy <laughs> to produce the shrieking inbred evolutionary cul-de-sac of news that is my segment. Meanwhile, <laughs> scientists have reanimated dead spiders as robot gripping claws. Thanks, science. <laughs> that is a horrifying collection of pants crapping terror. It's an image ripped right from the nightmares I'll have later tonight. It's a Venn diagram where spiders, robots, and zombies overlap. <laughs> Jimmy, can we zoom in? Oh my God! Spiders apparently flex using a hydraulic system based on the torso. So scientists at Rice University thought, hey, what if we just jammed a needle in there and controlled it ourselves? I'll let them upset you. We took the spider, we placed the needle in it, not knowing what was going to happen. We kind of had like an estimate of where we wanted to um, place the needle. And when we did it, it worked. The first time, right off the bat, actually. And that was really like... I don't even know how to describe it. I do. <laughs> you made an arcade claw machine out of a dead arachnid. <laughs> we now live in a Tim Burton fever dream. <laughs> These researchers say, they say that using dead spiders could create cheap, effective, and biodegradable alternatives to current robotic systems, and they have dubbed their new area of research necrobotics. <laughs> so they're necrobots. That is in no way reassuring. <laughs> Although the title alone has already been greenlit as the next Michael Bay movie. <laughs> now, you may be asking me, saying, Steve, what happens when the necrobot spiders definitely rise up and turn against us? How will we get rid of them? Apparently, the answer is using other necro spiders. <laughs> That's really gonna change how we react to bugs in our house. Oh, my God, it's a spider! Get me the spider! Meanwhile, employee is at a fruit stand, found a wallet, and it was William Shatner's. <laughs> and that's the story. <laughs> it's all there. It's got everything. Everything's right there. Uh, workers, where do they work? Fruit stand. What do they do? Find wallets. Whose wallet? William Shatner's. 
There's nothing more to add to that story. It reminds me of the classic Hemingway short story, For Sale, Baby Shoes, They're William Shatner's. <laughs> Meanwhile, a new contest asks, want free Subway sandwiches for life? Nope. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's big travel news, otherwise known as Hudson news. Because this morning, JetBlue agreed to buy Spirit Airlines for $3.8 billion. It's historic. This is the first time anyone wanted Spirit Airlines. <laughs> it's normally the last choice behind, can't we just walk from Albany to Rochester? <laughs> this deal comes after a long bidding war between JetBlue and Frontier, which is why insiders say getting to an agreement was a rocky process. Oh, you mean it was... Turbulent? <laughs> Nothing is final yet because the two airlines now have to wait for regulatory approval, but they expect to close the transaction no later than the first half of 2024. Now, it sounds like a long time, but while they wait, they can go to Zbarro, Maybe check out the duty-free, get some cologne liquor and 700 cigarettes, walk back to Zabaro, convince themselves 9 a.m. is late enough for a cocktail, then boom, it's 2024. <laughs> but I gotta say, this merger is bittersweet for me because Spirit Airlines is one of my favorite companies to make fun of. Here's a taste. Meanwhile, airline passengers were stunned when a woman was caught breastfeeding her hairless cat <laughs> on a Delta flight. <laughs> I know! Shocking that this didn't happen on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Spirit Airlines released this pro-pride statement. At Spirit, we embrace all people who are willing to sit in pet cargo and pay for their ginger ale and peanuts with human teeth. Delta updated their website to say, masks are now optional for employees and customers following the White House announcement. While Spirit Airlines released this cocktail napkin, Spirit has never valued human life. <laughs> Fare thee well, spirit. In your honor, I raise a non-complimentary glass of unrefrigerated orange drink. <laughs> May you lay over in hell. We'll be right back with Jonathan Carl.